Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project for Beginners. This is lesson number 12 and I thought today we would do something a little bit more complex and kind of give a bit of a review for things that we've been looking at in the previous videos, especially the parts about setting up and developing a baseline. In the previous videos, and if you haven't seen any of them, you can click on my uh, channel and look at my playlist under Microsoft Project for Beginners. And I kind of go through things from the very beginning right through. I'll also leave some links in the description below. Uh, also, please uh, click subscribe and click on the notifications to keep up to date with new videos. I'm a professor of construction management and I teach construction management and of course scheduling is a big part of what we do in construction and so Microsoft Project is one of the tools that can be used in scheduling. So I've been kind of trying to walk people through how MS Project works right from the very basics. All right. So I've got this little bit more complex schedule than I've been using. Before I've been just using task one, two, three, four, just to get people used to it so you can follow, follow along. And here I just wanna review something. If you've got your own project schedule and you've been following along and you want to uh, check things, um, there's five things, five things that I would suggest today that you review uh, when you've developed a schedule in Microsoft Project. And the first one, and you've heard me say it before, we don't want to have any open ends. So open ends are when an activity is not linked. And so when I look at this, uh, you can see here that something doesn't seem to be right. This is way back at the first day of the project. And this is basically apply for permits. So how can we be doing brick masonry walls? So there's an error in one of the links and it's very easy to happen. Also, if you haven't completed your links, that's a problem too. Everything should have a predecessor and accessor, successor, except the first activity won't have a predecessor and the last activity won't have a successor. And so these are standard columns and they're in the entry view here. And so I'm currently in the entry view. I just switched screens by the square icon box very quickly. And I can see predecessors. And you know what? There's a lot of them. And some of them are empty because I've also recommended that you don't link to summary tasks. So you shouldn't link anything to summary tasks. Activities should be linked to activities. The summary tasks are part of our work breakdown structure. So we shouldn't be linking to them even though the program lets us to. It's not a best practice. And you see all these ones and it might get a little bit confusing and you might miss it. And it might not be so blatantly obvious as this one is that something's up. Uh, but you should always check it because I know from working with a lot of uh, people that have started scheduling projects and things like that, they miss these kind of things. Um, so what I would recommend that you do is that you try to um, filter this information. So you go to... Uh, you click here and on predecessors and basically you see where it says select all click on that so I just pulled that down select all and just show me the blank ones and now it's just going to only show me the blank uh, um, activities that don't have predecessors but I got all these headings so I, they're kind of making it messy so I'm going to go to format and I'm going to go to summary tasks and I see that I've got this uh, one that doesn't, basically the first activity shouldn't have a predecessor as I said. And so yeah, masonry walls, all right? So that would have identified it for me. If I had like five or six that didn't have predecessors, it would have identified those five or six. And then I could at least put make note of their numbers and then I could work at fixing it, right? Uh, what you have to do though is remember that you filtered it. So I'm gonna click on filter I'm going to go select all, click OK, and it'll bring back all of those activities. Nice. So now I've got them all back. I would also check successors because it's possible to be missing a, a predecessor and not a successor and vice versa. So I would insert the column, type S for successors, click on successors, and see if there is any. Again, I would filter for the successors, right? And so I'm gonna filter for the successor, select all, click on blank, go okay. And in this case, I am going to see if I slide to the left, 
uh, install weather barrier. So of course, that's where the other activity should, the brick should be linking from or to. So I know I'm in that zone there. So the last one shouldn't have a successor because it's the last activity, that's fine. So that's no problem. So that just means that's the only one I've got to deal with in this case. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go down here and there's that install air vapor barrier number 49. So what is my successor to that? It should be number 50 or vice versa. What is the predecessor? It should be 49. Either way, once I fix it on one, it'll fix it on both. And so now I'm good. I've corrected my no open end. So that was number one. Number two, Make sure you've got a proper work breakdown structure. Now I just shut off the work breakdown structure, so I should turn it back on. So I'm gonna turn it back on, just go up to summary tasks, and there, now that's where they are. And so I can see my work breakdown structure. Now I don't have to have it all opened up. What I can do is I can take a good look at it, and I can look at it from the various uh, levels that I wanna see it. So where I'm at is the view tab, and I'm going to click on outline. I'm going to say level one. And I'm going to go up here, level one. All right, that's the highest level. That should encompass the whole uh, project, and it does. Level two. Now look at that. I got pre construction, I got construction, I got closeout. And then I've just got this activity showing up here that total completion, which I don't have uh, housed anything under anything except for new township. So that's fine. That's the way I wanted it, that's good. All right, level three. All right, so level three, it's gonna show me one, two, three. Three levels, or one, two, and then the next level in, which is here. And then under close out, so that's what I have there. So if that's okay, that's fine. So I've got site mobilization substructure, and I'm thinking, you know, something seems to be not quite right. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to look to the, the next level and see, because to me, there should be one more uh, item here and I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to go to uh, outline level four. And so now I see, okay, site mobilization, substructure, utilities installation under that, that makes sense. Uh, slab on, on grade, that makes sense. Wait a minute, why is superstructure under slab on grade? That's not right. So I'm gonna fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to outdent that. So I'm gonna to go to task and I'm gonna click on outdent so that I have it lined up and I'm gonna open it up. So that's a major activity that I wanna have under basically construction. I don't wanna have it listed under slab on grade. It's okay for me to have utility installations under substructure because I wanna do that under that heading. So that's okay, I don't have a, an issue with that. All right, and you can see I've got more levels to go. I could go again to view and I could check, is this all right at level five? And now I could roll down and see, are these indented where I want them? Like interior finishes? Yes, I want flooring, building systems. Uh, no, I don't want landscaping, it's not under that, so that's good. And close out, does this look okay? And yes, it's looking okay for how I want it developed. Does yours look okay for how you want it developed? And remember, a work breakdown structure, make sure you're not missing anything. Do you have the right types of relationships on the activities? Well, easiest way that you should, if you're going to set a baseline, like you're, you're setting this up so that you can set a baseline, this is going to be the plan. And so mostly on this example here, I have finished to start, which is typical. I I'm a firm believer in don't make it any more fancy than you need to make it, right? Finish to start is very understandable. That's why it's the default in Microsoft Project. Uh, but I do see I have some start to start. And what I would check if I've got some start to starts is that I've closed off the links, which I have, uh, and I've checked that anyway, so I know that. So start to start, and I've closed off the links, and so that's fine. So I've got these, and again, you could open that up so you see um, more of what's going on. And if those are okay, then that's fine. So I'm checking my relationships, making sure that they make sense. And to be honest, what I would do with a schedule, typically, 
I'll start at the beginning and I'll walk through it step by step. And does this make sense? Uh huh. Did this make sense? Am I missing anything? Is there something else I want to add? And it's you're you're building the project in your mind. And I don't know if you can see those drawings behind me, but really you should be looking at the drawings. You should be building it visually. You're making a mental model of your project. How do you want to build this project? You're thinking about it step by step. This is all going to change, right? This is giving you a good layout though, and the changes should be possible and it's iterative as you go along, right? And there's a lot on short-term scheduling that comes down as an umbrella out of your master schedule. Uh, so then that requires a lot of collaboration, but you got to have a starting point to understand how long is this project? When is it going to start? When is it going to finish? I've got this high level. How many working days is it going to take? That gives you a lot of great information um, to follow um, that way so that then you can work out the details. And it also is a motivating tool to engage your project team. It's a communication tool to engage the project team towards meeting it. All right, so all right types of uh, relationships. Now, I said I start from the beginning and go to the end. You know what I also do? And I've learned this from Lean Construction Methodology uh, myself too. Uh, there's what they call what we call pull planning and we start from the end and we work our ba ways backwards and we start thinking about all right so if this is the last task what is the second last task? What do I need to uh, have this task finished? Right. So I start working from that perspective and I work my way through it step by step. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll to task to bring that up. So I start working on that step by step to bring that up so that we can um, see it. So you start from the end and you work backwards. And does this make sense? Does this make sense? Should this be before this? Should this be before this? Right. In other words, you need you need this done to do this. And you're asking yourself each of those questions as you work your way backwards. And if it makes sense, that's perfect. That means it made sense going forward and it made sense going backwards. It's looking at it in a different way. You know how sometimes you proofread something and you think you did it perfect and you checked it and you triple checked it and then later on you see this, a mistake there. Well, that's usually because you follow it through the same way every time. Sometimes you change the font size on it uh, so it changes over a different page. It's lined up a little bit differently. You pick up on that mistake. Well, same thing with a schedule going forward and going backwards is very, very helpful. So that's number four. So we've done no, no open ends. We've done proper work breakdown structure. We've done the right type of relationship. Is it finish to start, start to start, finish to finish? What's the relationship and is it done right for that activity? And another point that I wanted to, uh, we said work uh, from the end to the beginning is do a calendar check. Did you put in all the holidays? Because that's something that you easily forget. Let's go check. Project changed working time. Oh, look at that. I have not put in a, any of the holidays for this project. Wow. That's going to significantly change the calendar finish date when I get that done. It's going to significantly change that, right? Because during this project, which is almost a, a year long, right? Uh, or nine months or whatever that is, there's probably going to be 10, 12 holidays, especially if it crosses the Christmas holidays. It might be a whole week in that case. So I better put them in because that's going to change the schedule. Otherwise, I'm going to be fighting it the whole way and I'm going to be late, basically. So you want to make sure that you put in all the holidays, do a check. If you put in any special calendars, are they properly applied, etc. Um, so that's five things I would check. The sixth thing that I'm going to give you as a bonus is I would look and see, do I have any constraints? Try to avoid constraints wherever possible. Constraints are where you've picked a date and it's locking something in. So for example, if I go here and it says May 31st uh, and I say, you know what, I'm going to make it um, June 2nd, right? says move the task to start on Wednesday, June 2nd, remove the link. I'm going to keep the link. I'm going to click OK. It puts a constraint there. Problem is everything before it lost, you don't know where the critical path is because now it doesn't really have it. It's kind of locked in there 
Like if something finishes sooner, like uh, this, and we want it to start sooner, it won't show us the improvement that has. This is locked in that date, right? And so you want to do a quick check for constraints. So that's number six. So again, quick review. No open ends. We check for open ends. Proper WBS. We check for the work breakdown structure. Three, we take do a check for the right types of relationships. Four, we look from the schedule going backwards. Five, we check for calendars. And six, we do uh, uh, the um, uh, check for constraints. Of course, we can always remove constraints quite easily by double clicking and going to the task information box, going to our advanced tab and saying, do you know what it is? As soon as possible. And that's the same as no constraint. And so that gets rid of it and brings back our critical path in view. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, if you want to learn Microsoft Project really well and you're interested in construction and construction management practices, please join our community. I'm really trying to build this community out. And uh, it helps whenever I get a subscriber and you click the notifications. So I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time on the projects. Bye for now.